said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Evangelist David Bybee has been called and anointed by God to fulfill the scripture. Now, let's join Evangelist David Bybee in the worship service at the Crossroads Community Church, Carthage, North Carolina. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to take a moment of your time before we go into the telecast this morning, and I want to thank each one of you that have been supporting the ministry and helping us over the years. We're going into our 20th year, and praise God, we're seeing souls saved every week across the United States and around the world. And, but right now, we need harvest partners, and I'm going to ask you, if you will, to become a harvest partner with this ministry. Uh, a harvest partner simply means that you make a pledge or a vow to send us something every month to help us with our television expenses, our air time, and production time. And if you will, call the number on the screen or write the address on the screen. The address will be up throughout the program, uh, DBM P.O. Box 910, Carthage, North Carolina, 28327. But uh, call and ask for a Harvest Partner card. Pray about it, and then do what you can to help us each and every month. Now, let's go into the program, and I hope today's program will be a blessing to you. Thank you. Or he's put something out there, and when you see it, it becomes hilarious because you know the devil is laid a snare, but God, being almighty and all-powerful and all-gracious and all-merciful, shows you where the snare is. Hallelujah. He said, I'll be a light unto your feet. I'll be a light unto your pathway. And you know, when you're walking down that straight and narrow way, and you're looking at Jesus, and you got your eyes on Calvary, and the enemy lays a, a trap or a snare in front of you, the Holy Spirit will guide and direct you. And praise God, that's where we're at today. And those joining by television this morning, get your Bibles out, wipe the dust off of them, and praise God, let's get into the Word of God. If I could title this today, uh, and, and I am going to title it, The Spirit of Faith. The Spirit of Faith. Now, I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to lay some groundwork here because uh, I, I, I was in Walmart this, this week, and the pastor, in case he's watching, I want to, to praise him for getting me to thinking. Because we were, we were just standing there, and we were talking about uh, the churches, and we were talking about different things. And, and he said, you know, he said, uh, he said I'm, I, I'm, I'm wondering what happened to, to faith, basically. Where, where's faith at? And, and he mentioned Caleb and, 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 and when, I, when he mentioned Caleb, the Holy Spirit just, mm, just like that, because we've just been talking about it. And the Holy Spirit just snapped in my mind. Another spirit. Another spirit. And, 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 and so, uh, brother, if you're watching television this morning, I praise God because you sowed a seed that has caused me to, to get into the Word. And all he did was he mentioned, where is faith at? And, and, and I want you to, to look, turn with me to Numbers chapter 14, chapter 13. Let's read chapter 14. Let's go to chapter 14. And let's begin with verse 24. Because this is where the Holy Spirit clicked when he said what he did. In, in Numbers 14, 24, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. He had another spirit. He had the spirit of faith walking with him. He had the spirit of faith, church, because 12 spies had gone into the land. God had promised all 12 of them that land. 
He said, I will give this land to you. It's yours for the taking. All you've got to do is go in and possess it. Now turn over to Numbers 13 and, and verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. Now Caleb had a spirit. Upon him, the ten of those spies came out saying, Oh, no, they're big, they're gigantic. And that's the spirit that's loose in the church today. The Christians have fear in their hearts. The Christians have doubt in their minds. Uh, and the people do not have that spirit of faith uh, that they need. We need the spirit of faith loosed in the house of God. Uh, we need the spirit of faith loosed in the pulpits. Uh, where is the spirit of faith today uh, to believe? Hallelujah. God said it. I believe it. And that's the end of it. Uh, and we've all got to get a hold of this same uh, uh, spirit of faith. Uh, and as we go through the scriptures, we learn uh, that, praise God, Joshua and Caleb were the only two uh, that stood upon that same spirit. They had another spirit. They didn't have the spirit of fear. And praise God, what did it do? It brought the blessings of God upon them because all the other ten were killed. All the other ten were destroyed. And the other ten did not get the promises. And church today, there's many Christians or so-called Christians sitting in the pews and standing in the pulpits that say, I know, I know, I know that God made me the promise. But they can't go get the possession. Why? Because they don't have the spirit of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he had another spirit. God told him, he said, listen, he had, Caleb had an, another spirit. He didn't have the same spirit that everybody else had. And if we come down through history, we can look and praise God. We can see David. He had another spirit upon him. He had another spirit because when he looked at Goliath, he had a made-up mind. God told me that I could whip that man. He sent me a lion, and I whipped it. He sent me a bear, and I whipped it. And that man is nothing compared to a mountain lion or a bear. He said, praise God, I can go and I can take him because I'm going in the name of the Lord. He had another spirit with him when he went out on the battlefield. He didn't have the same spirit, Brother Lyndon, that all the army had over here. They had a spirit of fear. They had a spirit of doubt, a spirit of disbelief. And that's where the church is standing today. Many of the church today, they believe the Word of God, but they don't have the right spirit. They've got a spirit of doubt. They've got a spirit of unbelief. And they've got a spirit of fear that God won't do it. What's going to happen if I say, rise in the name of Jesus? That old spirit of fear will come upon you and say, that person will not rise. What's going to happen if I say be healed and made whole in the name of Jesus. That spirit of doubt will come upon you and say it's not going to happen and therefore you can't believe it. But God's saying in this last day, I want my people to read my word and stand on my word and not look in the natural and not worry about man because man will cause you to fall. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to see you through. It's the spirit of faith that we need. As David walked out on the battlefield, he had no doubt that day that he was going to get the promises of God because he knew that God was already going to take care of him. He knew that God was going to deliver him and bring victory to his household because he said, I'm going out there and I'm going to show this Philistine that my God is bigger than he is. And then we have Daniel. Old Daniel prayed three times a day. Why? Because he had a spirit of faith on him. He knew what man said. Man said, we're going to kill you. We're going to throw you in a den of lions if you keep praying. He said, I don't care. I know my God and I know that my God is bigger than the lions. I got a spirit of faith with me. And when I go into that den of lions, that spirit's going to go with me because that spirit's not going to leave me. And that spirit's not going to forsake me. And then when he went into the den of lions that day, the old spirit of faith was walking right beside of him. And praise God, we learned that day. And praise God, as the lions was all about him that they went down. They laid down and went to sleep. Daniel went in with the same spirit. And church, that's what God is wanting today. He's looking for someone today that'll take up that spirit of faith and walk with it. I'm talking about the spirit of faith. I'm not talking about the spirit of showmanship. I'm not talking about the spirit of talent. I'm not talking about, praise God, the spirit of numbers. This church, I praise the Lord, was based upon faith. God said, do it, and we did it, and praise the Lord, we're still here. I've seen building after building erected because of what man said God said, but I've seen those buildings vacated, and I've seen churches closed, but I'm telling you today that God is a God, hallelujah, 
when his word speaks it it's going to come pa- come to pass when God's in the middle of it it's going to come to pass man can prophesy and prophesy and prophesy but except the Holy Spirit is in it it's going to come to naught but when the Holy Ghost is in it hallelujah it's going to come to pass it may not come to pass